Kanban. Kanban is a great way in which you can connect two processes and make them speak to each other so you can be managing the whole production flow without actually trying to manage specific processes independently. So in order to understand, I'll show you a very short example of a sandwich factory. So imagine that you are doing sandwiches. So you are assembling this on the basis of cut bread, cheese and meat. Obviously, you have a two type of sandwiches. So one is sandwich with cheese and the other one is with meat. As you can see here, we've got the production capacities. So we can cut bread for 20 sandwiches, but we can assemble only six. We can cut cheese for 15 per hour, but we can assemble obviously six. And the same goes for meat. So the capacity to cut the meat is bigger than assembly. So if those processes don't speak to each other, so cutting bread doesn't speak to assembly link of the sandwich, you have a situation where per hour a lot of inventory will occur. So here we, you, after one hour we will have a forcing cut bread that will not, never be used because the throughput, the production here is much smaller than here for cutting the bread. And the same obviously goes for cheese. It's a little bit smaller, so nine because it's 15 versus six. And then obviously cutting the meat, so four due to the fact that here we've got 10 and six. And this is per hour. So after eight hours, you have 32 and here it will be also eight times more. So what do you do is you want to limit somehow the inventory. So you want to tell this guy who is cutting the bread, stop cutting the bread because I'm not able to, to do it. And we also don't want to have a situation where basically this guy who is assembling the sandwiches has to talk to each and every person independently. So what we can introduce is a, some sort of a limitation. And uh, one of this limitation is the so-called Kanban. And Kanban is basically a supermarket, a rack with set places that limits your production. So here, for example, we have four places for cut bread, two places for cheese and two places for meat. So the guy who cuts the bread should stop cutting the bread if he has already cut four pieces. The guy who cuts cheese should stop cutting the cheese if he has already two cheese sets of cheese cut for the sandwiches. And the same goes for the meat. In this way, we don't have that much inventory and we obviously have sufficient amount of material for the guy to assemble the sandwiches fast without actually having to talk to each and every process specifically. So what happens once the guy who is assembling the sandwich removes the cut bread, the guy who is cutting the bread has to fill it in. And the same goes for cut, cutting the cheese and cutting the meat. So as you can see, the processes are talking with each other without actually the need to manage each and every specifically on their own. The Kanban icon is usually like this. So it's inverted E or you can also say that it's like three. Now, examples of Kanban. So usually this is uh, some sort of a box and with a tag. So here you've got a, a box used in the production as a Kanban for ordering uh, small screws. Here you've got just the card. So sometimes you don't have to send the box and the card, but just the card. So you take the product and the card which attached to the product is sent to a specific production department. Here we've got some sort of bags with tags. You can also have uh, the whole rack with boxes like this where you have uh, plenty of things. So not just four types, but much more than we have. Sometimes you just, again, have tags which you put in a specific place. And quite often you might have uh, just a board that you move just tags to signify what is supposed to be the to specific task. This table shows you task being moved from one place to another. So as you can see, you have uh, plenty of different types of Kanban and you should use it in order to make the processes speak to each other.